Welcome to part 2 of creating the Boo character from the Mario series. Um, if you're joining us in this video, uh, there is actually part 1 to this that I'll link in the description below. But in this video we will look into creating the detecting the player um, to make them basically know when to move towards it and how to detect if the player is um, looking towards Boo or not. So without further ado, we'll go into that now. For the first part, I want to perform a check to make sure that the target player or the player character is in within range. So we can actually copy some paste some code rather than to type it all out. So if I select the target player is valid, control W, oh, delete that. And then we can drag that down here. And I'll just check if we've got a valid player reference. So similar to what we did up here, we've got the target player, we get the actor location, of that and the boo character location. Um, we can also use reuse some of this as well. So if you hold control, select these nodes, and then down here, control W, we'll just, rather than now to type it all out, we'll just copy and paste these nodes. However, instead of getting, we want the direction, but however, we want to know how far away that's, uh, how long, how much distance is between uh, the boo character and the player. So if we control, Drag in the player direction, and then from that, we want to type in the vector length. From that, promote it to a variable, and we just want to call this distance to play. So set that to that, and hit compile, and once we've done that, well, we want to just do a, a, a quick check to see if it's within the range. So all I'm going to do is drag in a distance to play and I want to see if it's less than equal to a specified amount. So I'm going to promote that to a variable and this I'm going to call this detection range. Hit compile. And so I'm going to set this to about 800 units. So from there, we want to branch. So if the distance to the player is less than or equal to the detection range, I want to set the playing range to true. And if you remember, if you come from part one, that's one of the uh, boolean conditions to satisfy moving the boot towards the player character. So if it's false, well, assuming that the player is not in range or if, the, if boot was chasing the player, I want to update the animation and set it back to idle. And once I've done that, it's obvious that obviously if they're not in range, Playing range is set to false. So just a quick recap. Check we've got a valid uh, reference to target player. We get whatever direction they're in. And we calculate the distance between the at location and the player. By you getting the vector length, that'll give us the distance to player. And then we check that distance player is within the detection range. In this case, 800. And then we set the playing range to true or false, uh, depending on if that's if whatever that condition returns us. Next, what we need to do is we need to perform a check to make sure that the the player is actually looking at Boo, and making it react um, accordingly, depending if they're looking away or not. Now, this is actually going to be in two parts. It's, there's two checks that need to be done because. Another thing can happen while um, Boo is looking at towards something. So effectively the, the player can actually run behind Boo and it won't update the rotation based on where the player position is. So in order to do something about that we have to perform two checks that I'll uh, quickly demonstrate now. So first thing we need is, well we need the player direction and we need to normalise it. And obviously we need to drag that in and we need to, to set it. The next thing we need to do is, well, 
obviously we need to know which direction Boo is facing. So to do that, we need to get that to a forward vector. Now, this uses dot product to basically determine to send out a value. So in this case, we're using dot product to get a value based on the angle. So this will actually be returned in radians, I believe. Um, so all you do is get the output forwards, get the dot product, and I'll quickly demonstrate that in a bit. So what I want to do is I want to check if it's less than or equal to a value. So if a direction is, if a character is facing towards something, it should be positive. However, if they're facing away, it should be negative. So if the character runs behind, it should produce a negative value based on the direction. So if I just set this to minus zero one as the threshold, a branch and connect that up or oh, quickly compile. So what I want to happen is if the player runs behind it and Boo is hiding in the hiding state that it'll detect that and it'll turn around and immediately start to chase after the player and that's done via this dot product checked. So I'll just quickly demonstrate that now. So get the X rotation. Now bear in mind we're dealing with 2D so we don't need all of the we only need to update certain values, but in this case I just want to update the Z value. So I want to add another float which is 180 degrees. And from that I want to make a rotator. And I'm going to connect the Y pitch and the yaw. And that I want to set the act to rotation. So, connect that. Hit compile save. And we'll just quickly test that now. So, if we hit play. There, you can see it when it runs underneath it, it'll rotate the, the actor accordingly. Next, we need to use dot product to determine if the player character is looking towards the boo. So to do that, we need to go back into the boo. And what I'm gonna do is just for, um, just to help out, I'm just gonna add a component. And set it so that uh, hidden in game is false. Hit compile and then we'll go back into the event graph. So what we need to do is, uh, we need to basically get the forward direction of the, the boot character and compare it to the forward direction of the target player. So we'll use the arrow in this case, because it pretty much does the same thing, as attached to the root. Get the forward vector of that, drag off that to get a dot product. And what we'll do is we'll get uh, a copy of the target player here, get the actor forward vector, drag it into that, and we want to see if the dot product is less than zero. If it's true, it will. If it's uh, if it's greater than one. Um, the player is looking at them, but if it's minus one, I believe that it's looking away. But what we can do is we can just get a print string and we can just compare it. So let's we'll perform the check before it, rather. Connect that into that and then connect out to ro uh, rotation to this. And also, the thing I forgot to do is. I wanted to use the, uh, that condition as well, so double click that, so it's a bit tidier. And we'll test that now. So hit play. So minus one if it's facing towards the player, positive one if it's looking away. So basically that's the second part of the dot product. So now what we need to do is we need to make it so that the 
animation state changes and basically that Boo will move towards the player or stop depending on what the where the player is facing. So for the last part, let's go back into the, the Boo actor. So we've done all the checks, we know that if the player is facing towards Boo or not, so now we're updating the state machine. So the first thing we need to do is we need to basically set well from the true is player facing away we'll set that to basically false and if it's less than that from the false we need to just say is player facing away set that to true so that will enable the, the seek behavior so if you ever seen the boo character when you look at it it will actually taunt you um, if you look at it for a while it'll start blowing a raspberry at you so what I want to do is from the true statement uh, I'm going to create a, a do once and from the reset because I want to be able to call this one over oh, getting ahead of myself I want a custom event and I'm going to call that reset dropped uh, that'll make sense in a little bit, but I'm just going to have that ready. So, from here, type update animation, and straight away, when the player is uh, not uh, facing away and is looking at Boo, it should go uh, into hiding. So from that, I want to create a timer so that after a little while, he'll uh, he'll start taunting the player. So to do that, I'm going to set a timer by events. And from here, I'm going to create an event. And what I'm going to do is just create an action event. And I'm going to call that taunting event. Obviously, it's gone all the way to the other side, so I'm just going to drag it all the way back here so it's easy to follow along. And I'm just going to position it there. So from the set time by events, I want to promote that to a variable and I want to call that a taunt timer handle. Now, the reason why I want this to have a timer handle is say if the player moves again, uh, moves away from or looks away from Boo, I want to be able to stop that uh, handle so that it can basically enter another state machine, uh, which is the pursuit state machine. So just go into there taunting event and the create event, hit compile and save. So that's part one. So that's the first stage rather on part one. Uh, taunting event, so from here, once the time is basically counted down, I want to uh, update the animation and I want to set that to taunting. And just going back on the time by events, I'm just going to give that two seconds. You can spin that off into a variable if you want, but I'm just going to after two seconds, it'll play the taunting animation. Uh, set it to low. And then after two seconds, it should, if you grab the taunt timer handle, it should clear and validate the timer by handle. And what I want to do is, once that's finished, I want to reset the taunt. So it should put the boot carrot into the hiding mode again. And then after a little while, it'll just taunt. Okay, so that's that part done. So lastly, if the character is facing away, if there's any uh, taunt timer active, I want to do a is timer active by handle, drive off branch, and okay from that if it's true clear and invalidate timer by handle and obviously I can just connect that straight into there and then what I want to do is I want to update the animation into pursuit but however if it's false I want to do the same thing so even if there isn't a valid handle active um, I want it to still update the animation to taunting and if needed reset the taunt 
to basically stop this uh, do once from preventing any further execution. So hit compile save and we'll give that a quick test now, see if it works. Okay, so I've got it in range. It starts to taunt. And as you can see, Boo is now chasing the character. So if I look at him, he'll hide, he'll taunt again. If I run through him, he's not doing any damage at the moment, but if you want to add that functionality, just add a collision onto it. And there you go. So it's out of range, gets close enough, and he'll just do that sequence. So that's the end of part two, and that's the end of the tutorial. So if you have any questions, please put it in the comments below, and I'll try and answer as best as I can. And I uh, hope to see you next time. Thank you for watching my video. If you like what you see, please like and subscribe to my channel.